So kindly ignore the fact that I'm wearing the same sweatshirt that I was wearing in the immediately prior video and ignore the fact that the same irritating little cat is still standing here buzzing into my microphone. And let's pretend that I'm not just binge recording all of these on the same day. Philip's got a solid backlog right now, so I'm taking advantage of that and I'm just getting everything recorded. So today, what do we have? We have a Sudoku called Pepper Lines by Philip Newman. And we have normal Sudoku rules. So this is going to mean digits one through nine in each row, each column, and each marked three by three region. Baby, your other mom will be home really soon, okay? Honey, darling, sweetheart, baby, come here, come here. You can't sit between my face and the camera. The people need to see me. It helps them keep focused. <laughs> um, and then we have ratio pairs. So we have some black circles that are marked with numbers here. And the numbers tell us the ratio between the two digits on either side of the black circle. So for instance, these two cells are in a one to eight ratio. These two cells are in a one to three ratio and so on. And finally, we have zipper lines. So there's some lines in the grid that are of odd length. And if you look at the central cell, whatever number goes into that central cell has to also equal the sum of each pair of digits that are the same distance away from it. So for instance, whatever goes here, has to be the sum of these, and it also separately has to be the sum of these. So we're going to start with the most restricted ratio pairs, because one trick for ratio pairs Sudoku is that anytime you see a number in a ratio dot that is five or higher, there's instantly only one way to do it. Because the biggest digit in a Sudoku is a nine, for instance, a, a one to five ratio normally could be like one to five, two to ten, and so on, but because we can't go bigger than nine, that has to be one to five. And similarly for like a one to six ratio, it has to be one to six, one to seven has to, or one to seven ratio has to be one and seven and so on. So these will always have a one. This will be a one and eight. Now this is a zipper line. So the middle digit has to be the one that's the sum of all of the other pairs. And that has the effect of the middle digit definitely having to be bigger than everything else in the line. So the bigger of these digits is an eight. Now eight is one plus seven, so I'm gonna place a one, I'm gonna place a seven, and I'm gonna kind of leave these end digits on the table. We'll come back to them later. Same deal here. This is one and seven. Philip is really working up a theme here. So for the same reason, that's gonna be a seven and that's gonna be a one. And now seven is one plus six, so let me place the six. Exact same thing's happening here. This has to be one and six in this order. One plus five is six. Finally, this has to be one and five in this order. 1 plus 4 is 5. And I see something else with this, and also with this actually. So with 5 and 6 as our center digits, there's only two ways to do each of those, assuming that all the digits see each other. For 5, if all the digits see each other, you can only do 1 plus 4 or 2 plus 3. So we've already done 1 plus 4, so we have to also do 2 plus 3. For 6, if all the digits see each other, we can only do 1 and 5 or 2 and 4. And by the way, the reason I'm being so diligent to specify the if all the digits see each other bit is because one thing people sometimes don't notice with zipper lines is that you can, if the digits on the ends don't see each other in the puzzle, you can duplicate digits. So six could be like three plus three, which is something that's really easy to overlook. So it's worth kind of mentioning it, even though it's not relevant here. Anyways, these are two and four. So that can't be two. That's our three. Now these have to sum to seven, and they're not one and six. They could be two and five, they could be three and four. This can't be a two, which means the other end can't be a five, but beyond that, I'm not sure what I can really do there. And then this is even less restricted. Or is it? Hold on, hold the phone. So <laughs> I just noticed the interaction between this and the zipper line. So first of all, eight in column one, can't go in those cells, can't go here, so it goes here. So we've used basically all of our low digits here. The only digits we have remaining are six, seven, and nine for these three cells. This can't be a seven by Sudoku. And really the kicker here is that that can't be a nine either because nine can't sum with another Sudoku digit to make a central digit of eight. That has to be six. Those don't have to be six though. Good Lord, Clover. <laughs> um, and that has to be two because six plus two is eight. So this can't be two and this can't be five. And we also can resolve our seven nine pair now because we have this seven here. Beautiful. We now know this is a three four pair because we got rid of two from both ends. So it definitely can't be two plus five. 
So with a 3-4 pair there, that's now a 2 and that's now a 4. What do we have left in this column? We need 5, 8, and 9. And while we can eliminate 5 there, we can't really do a ton with that. And then we need 7, 8, and 9 here. And here we're going to need 3, 4, 5, and 9. And I don't think we're going to squeeze a whole lot more out of these long zipper lines, so let's see what we can do with the rest of the grid. So we have to make a decision. Are we going to work with our ratio dots or are we going to work with the zipper lines? I'm leaning towards ratio dots because I've noticed that these two relatively large ratio dots both have ones in their columns. That has to be meaningful. So a ratio of one to four, not including a one, has to be two and eight. So that's a two eight pair. And of those two, one of them has to be in the middle. And because eight is bigger, it must be the eight. Eight is two plus six. So now we've placed all of our digits on that line. Now, a ratio of one to three without a one, unfortunately has two options, right? So it's either two and six or it's three and nine. Let's reduce that a little bit. So this one can't be two, so that can't be six because if this was two, that would have to be six and vice versa. This can't be three, so that can't be nine. So our two options are either three here and nine here or six here and two here. And the latter of those is impossible because again, zipper lines, big digit has to be in the middle because the big digit's the sum of everything. So we've got to go three and nine here and then six here. So that eliminates a nine for us. Now, what about these ratios? Did those get restricted by that? Oh, I do notice that this eight and nine by value is now resolved. I can grab that real quick. This is now a two ratio that doesn't include a one or a six. So this is either two and four or four and eight. I'm noticing both of those include a four, but there's a four in this region. So the four goes there. And then that's either a two or an eight, interesting. Oh, and there's a nine in the region now, so I can resolve these digits. And that should tell me that this is a two. Nice. All right, how about this one? Neither a one nor a six, and it's in a one to two ratio, so we have to go either two times two is four or four times two is eight. That's some combo of two, four, and eight. I can eliminate an eight here. I can eliminate a two there. Now, Let's do a little bit of Sudoku to try to kind of clean up the grid a little bit and maybe get these last couple of zipper lines, right? So these are going to be two, three, four, and five. Those can't be two and four because those are in the column. So these can't be three or five. And now I have a two, four pair and I'm wondering if I strictly have to use this to solve. I'm going to go ahead and use it though because that just kind of popped up while I was solving. That's gonna be an eight and a four with a two there. Now the central digit on this zipper line is either three or five. If it was three though, these would have to sum to three, so they'd have to be two and one. And then we would have a problem because there's a one in the row. So that can't be three, that must be five with a three here because three plus two is five. So now how do I do a one to two ratio with a three in it? That is going to be a six. These cells are gonna contain one, four, five, and nine. And by Sudoku, none of these guys can be four. So that's gonna be a four. Oh, and that finally gives us the orientation of our three, four pair. That's just fantastic. Okay, that's a two now. Those can't be nine because there's a nine in the row and the one five are resolved by this five. Can we do something similar? Let, let's go for this three ratio dot. We've kind of been ignoring this so far. Maybe there's something we can do now. I ignored it at first because it had a couple of different possibilities and there was some other stuff that was much more restricted in the grid, but let's go for it now. So it doesn't have a one. So it's not one and three. So it could be two and six, in which case it would have to go like that because there's a two in this row. It could also be three and nine and there's a nine there. So that would have to be three and nine. And now we get to a second fun fact about zipper lines, which is because the biggest possible digit in a nine by nine Sudoku is nine. And because the middle digit is always the sum of two other digits, you can't put a nine on a zipper line anywhere other than in the middle. Because if it was on an edge, we'd have to sum it with something else like a one, and then all of a sudden our middle digit is 10, which is impossible. So we can't put a nine here. This must be a two and that's a six. So what's going on in the rest of this row? That's three, five, seven, and nine. So that's not a five or a nine. 
that can't be a nine because of that rant I just went off on, and this certainly can't be a three because three is much smaller than two plus three, which is the minimum there. These are going to be one, three, and seven to fill out the region, and we have a three and seven in this column, so that's a one and that's a three, seven pair. To finish out this row, we do need a four, which can only go in that position, and then we need either a three or a seven here. These are also three, five, seven, nine. And I don't quite feel confident about this yet. I could kind of case bash that, but I know that Philip would not ask me to do that in a gas puzzle. So let's leave it and let's just watch it resolve later. This has three, seven, and nine. Again, we rule the nine off of the zipper line and we eliminate a three here. This, we need one, six, and eight. There are six and eight here, so that's a one. Now the central digit is either a six or an eight on this zipper line. And it's definitely not going to be a six because our edge digit here is either three, which we can't use with a six. It would be three plus three in the same row, or seven, which is bigger than six. That's not going to work. So that's our eight. And so eight is either seven plus one, which breaks because we already have a one, or what it really is, which is three plus five. So now the last two digits here are going to be two and four, I believe. Yep, that's a two and that's a four. Awesome. Uh, there's a three in this row, so the five, seven, and nine go there. We need to place a one and an eight in the row, so that's taken care of. That's not going to be a five. I still have one zipper line that I haven't dealt with yet. I'm looking forward to resolving that. That'll be real satisfying. I need a six and nine in this column. They go there and there. So that's a seven and a nine. That makes that a five and a seven. That's now a nine, and that's not a seven. And that's still not resolved. Oh, man, that is killing me. What? Oh, okay. Here we go. We get it. We, we got this. So that's a three. That makes this a nine. It makes this a five. It makes this a nine. Maybe we waited too long because now we're going to get this half of the line just by Sudoku. We did, of course, need this earlier in the solve. For instance, we had to rule a nine off of that cell. So it's not like the zipper line is pointless. We just got these two cells on it without really referring to the zipper line stuff. Um, which, by the way, is completely fine and normal to have happen in a puzzle as you're solving it. Sweet. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's pepper lines. I really enjoyed that one. That, um, that, that had a lot of different moves to it, but I really enjoyed kind of trying to spot the next place to make a good move. So thank you, Philip, and thank you to those of you who watched this and who tried the puzzle. Have a great rest of your day.